of the State of Israel. Americans are proud indeed that on May 15, 1948, the United States was the first country to extend diplomatic rage and determination of the Jewish people, both those already resident in Palestine and those who survived the Nazi death camps in Europe. The hopes for freedom, for independence, for an end to centuries of persecution were instilled in the State of Israel. Mr. President, Israel and the United States reflected in the search for a just and lasting peace in the Middle East. We share the conviction that Israel can be secure and realize its full promise and genius only when security and lasting peace are achieved. The United from all sides find a way to bridge a crevasse of hatred and distrust. The United States is ready as ever to help build that bridge. We encourage the progress that has been made in this noble endeavor. It was 10 years ago this month that President Sadat could find a just solution for the Palestinian people. We want to see an end to the scourge of international terrorism. We want to see an end to the conflict in the Persian Gulf and to the war between Iran and Iraq. Mr. President, we know that the people of Israel share these desires with the people of the United States. Together, we also share a commitment to create better lives for all peoples of the world. Israel has provided leadership in harnessing science and technology to human needs, as is reflected in the still constrained by the Soviet system. I pledge to you that we will persevere in our efforts to persuade the Soviet Union to meet its international obligations on the Helsinki Accords, not just to Soviet Jews, but to all the citizens of the Soviet Union. Mr. Partners, in the global quest for human dignity and freedom, we will always remain at each other's side. Mr. President, it is a special honor. As a free and independent state, an event which righted an historic wrong to our people over the centuries. Surely, Mr. President, at moments such as these, words are inadequate in which to express the sense of gratitude which the citizens of Israel feel towards this great country for its ongoing... Despite the enormous differences in size and population, we are bound together in a partnership of such profound... Confidence. For this year, as you have mentioned, sir, marks the anniversary 49 years ago of the Nazi onslaught on the Jewish people in Germany in Kristallnacht, the Night of the Crystals, in which synagogues throughout Germany were put to fire. The Holy Bible and the scrolls of our Holy Torah recording the five books of Moses bearing the message in the most terrifying holocaust ever seen in the history of mankind. I stood moments ago and received the honours accorded me as head of the State of Israel and thought of the day of infamy at the United Nations 12 years ago today. I had the privilege then, as you mentioned, sir, of defending my people against the scurrilous and despicable attack on Zionism, which was mounted by a contemptible co people and their tradition stand for in human dignity and experience. As one recalls these events which occurred on this very day, on this solemn and moving occasion marking the first state visit of an Israeli head of state to the United States of America, with all that it implies, 
the significance of the re-emergence of Israel must surely be in the forefront of our consciousness. Mr. President, at this moment, as I stand for our long history, I cannot but give expression to the age-old Jewish prayer, Shechianu Vikimanu Vihigianu Lazman, and has over the years exerted every effort to achieve it. Under your inspired leadership and with the active support of your administration, we continue these efforts to achieve the peace, the astic and warm welcome accorded him by the then government of Israel, by the Knesset, and by the people of Israel. That visit led, thanks to the active involvement in subsequent negotiations of the President and the administration of the United States, to the first peace treaty signed by Israel with an Arab state, indeed the leading state in the Arab world. I come to you representing a friend and an ally. Our two peoples are committed to the same principles and values which our Bible gave to the world. We acknowledge and appreciate the generous support of the American people extended to us in the mutual interest of our two countries to ensure the advancement of the cause of peace and stability in our area and indeed the peace in which the longest war in this century is taking place, a brutal bloody war fired by the fanatic extremism of religious fundamentalism which threatens the stability of each country. Thank you, Mr. President. We're not doing anything to bring it down. But uh, you're comfortable with it, uh, with the value right now and its declining trend? I can't. I haven't discussed that with any of our people yet. Uh, uh, I don't look for a further decline and don't want a further decline. From where it is right now, sir? From where it is right now. Lights, please. Is hey, Secretary Bennett in the doghouse, sir? So is no, I don't put people in the doghouse. How about the woodshed? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, please. We have another group of people. Just wait, please, the cameras. Let's go, please. Yes. 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 Yes.
as soon as that's going to be pressed. We have, uh, we have a problem with our televisions on the strike. Yeah. Yeah. In this room. So, uh, Let me run that. <laughs> Lights, please. Thank you. This way, please. Well, let's go, please. Well, as I said over in the White House there, in the East Room, I'm delighted that your visit is coming here during Israel's 40th anniversary of independence. And our relationship is very important to all of us and certainly to me personally. Uh, deepening ties and strategic relationship that we've had are sources of great satisfaction. I know that Secretary Schultz's trip and the peace process, uh, well, they reflected the determination we had to maintain momentum and prevent drift. And Secretary Schultz found strong commitment to peace among all of your leaders. And while divisions in Israel over how to start negotiations, uh, we'll work with both Prime Minister and Foreign Minister and we'll also continue our efforts with King Hussein. I like can keep this going. The challenge is to transform a general desire for peace into a political reality. And a two-track approach, practical steps in the West Bank and Gaza build cooperation, and trying to start negotiations by overcoming substantive and procedural gaps that are dividing presently the, the parties. But I think for an opening, that's enough for me. Uh, you perhaps have an agenda, too, that you would like to speak to. So Mr. President, I'd like to... Yeah. 